Now here in this video we are going to be looking into second unit of IoT sensors and devices and in this second unit we will be looking into the main topics related to what is microcontrollers and microprocessors, what are the different types of microcontrollers available. We will be looking later into the Arduino and what, what are the different types. Followed by that we will be looking into the Arduino Uno architecture and later we will be looking into what is an ADC, what is a DAC that is uh, uh, analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter and we will be looking how data is being received by the Arduino that is data acquisition. So now we will be starting our second unit with the topic introduction to microcontrollers and microprocessors. So what is a microprocessor? It's a device that is it is a controlling unit. A microprocessor to be more precise is a controlling unit of a microcomputer wrapped inside a small chip. So it is a small chip over here and this small chip is equivalent to a controller. What are the performances that can be done over here? It can do the operations of an ADU, automatic logical operations. It communicates with other devices and that are connected with it. And it is a single IC in which several functions are combined together. You can see from this architecture, this is your main microprocessor over here, which has the ADU inside. And from this, you will be able to communicate to different devices available outside. So what are the different devices available outside? You have your RAM, random access memory, you have your ROM, your read-only memory, you have your I.O. ports, it could be any device that, that is connected to it, and you have the timing synchronization required for the data transfer. So you have data that is being sent through a data bus, and from where to take that, you have the address bus over here. So all of these combined together, it forms your particular microprocessor. So what is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is a chip optimized to control electronic devices. It is a chip that is used to control electronic devices. It is stored in a single integrated circuit with which is dedicated to performing a particular task and execute one specific function. As you saw earlier in microprocessor, it could do any ALU based task and that can be done. It is generic in purpose, but when you come to the microcontroller, you can see that it is specific in purpose. It can do it can perform a particular task and execute one specific function that is the program that you write you will build up an application you will build up a project the microcontroller can do only that particular work it cannot do any other work depending on what program is fed inside it will do the particular task it is a, it is specially designed circuit for embedded applications all embedded based applications can be done using microcontroller which is widely used to automatically control electronic devices so you don't have to manually control anything. All things are controlled automatically using this particular microcontroller. And what are the main components of a microcontroller? It has a memory, it has the processor inside, and it has the programmable I.O. What do you mean by the programmable I.O.? The interfaces that are connected to it can be programmed and said whether it is an input device or an output device, when to get the data from the I.O. device, all these are programmable. So that is why you called it as a programmable I.O. device. And as you may be aware, it has the processor inside. So a microcontroller has the processor inside, which is the main difference. Whereas a prior processor itself is an independent device over here. So controller has a processor. It has the ROM, RAM, timer, and the I/O port, along with the CPU inside of the central processing unit, which is nothing but the processor. So what are the differences between a microprocessor and a microcontroller? It forms the heart of the computer system, the microprocessor. And microcontroller it forms the heart of the embedded system. So the difference between that, it is the computer system over here that it is the heart of, whereas the microcontroller it is the heart of the embedded system over here. It is only a processor, so memory and I/O components need not be connected externally. It is a it is not mandatory to connect these devices to the particular processor. Whereas in a microcontroller, it has a processor along with the memory and the I.O. components with that. And we saw that in this diagram inside the particular chip. Next, memory and I.O. has to be connected externally so the circuit becomes large. So outside the chip, you have to connect the particular memory and I.O. There is no options of putting it inside the chip. Whereas in your microcontroller, you have the options of memory and I.O. related stuff are put inside. And the internal circuit is small. So that is the advantage over here. You can't use it in compact systems because the uh, devices are connected external to the microprocessor. You cannot use it for compact systems. Whereas over here, you can use it for compact small area systems. 
cost of the entire system is very high because it is doing multiple functions the cost is going to be high over here but here it is doing only a single function so the cost is going to be entirely lower here due to the external components the total power consumption is going to be high you have the external components memory everything are external over here so they need their specific power supply externally so it is going to be consuming more power therefore it is not ideal for the devices running under store batteries okay so where some devices can run on batteries okay you are you are having your particular uh, uh, gadgets like your uh, smartwatch or whatever all these are uh, battery driven devices so this cannot uh, this is not a best option for using the uh, in those kinds of applications so for that you will go for the microcontroller as external components are low total power consumption is less over here so the consumption being less it can be used for devices running on stored power like batteries so it can be used for applications related to that most of the microprocessors do not have power saving features they do not have the power saving most microprocessors to be more precise they don't have this power saving feature they work depending on the time when a task is provided it will do that particular task most of the microcontrollers have a power, power, power saving mode because you can program it that is the main reason over here you are able to control when to be on when to be idle all these you can program when a particular condition occurs it will turn on the particular uh, passive device over there so everything is under control over there so that is the advantage over here it is mainly used in computers whereas here it is mainly used in washing machines mp3 players embedded system you can name it all those applications around you have these particular microcontroller microprocessor has a smaller number of registers so more operation are memory based so it has only less number register is a internal storage device of your microprocessor it is made up of flip flops you cannot um, have many registers inside your microprocessor so if you want to do a particular task what should happen you have to go and take the data from the external memory so you have memory it is memory based over here whereas in the microcontroller it has more registers inside hence the programs are easier to write internal registers available in the microcontroller are very much high compared to that of the particular microprocessor so this is another advantage over here microprocessors are based on von neumann model whereas here it is based on the harvard architecture we'll be looking into them in detail in a few slides from now one von neumann architecture is a microprocessor normal uh, architecture type whereas here in microcontrollers we have the von neumann and the harvard but the most common one is the harvard type over here and next one microprocessor it is a central processing unit on a single silicon based integrated chip a processor is a single chip over here but there is over here the single chip the byproduct of the development of the microprocessor with the cpu along with other peripherals so in the chip you will have the silicon based processor along with the other peripherals memory and io devices timers everything on the single chip over here so that is what you mean by the microcontroller it has no ram has no room input output units timers and other peripherals which we told earlier it does not have them inside the chip whereas here it has a cpu ram rom other peripherals embedded onto a single chip over here that is what we saw in the diagram earlier it uses an external bus to interface a ram rom and the other per peripherals so a bus bus is a group of wires 8 bit 10 16 bit and so on so wires combine together form a bus over here so to communicate to the external world you require buses over here so it is required it uses an internal controlling bus because every device is available inside the chip itself you do not require external uh, control so internal controlling bus is available here here you have external buses in microprocessor based system it can run at very high speed because of the technology involved because it is built for multiple tasking and its technology involved in the processor it is built for high speed but in microcontroller it is built for maximum as of now they, they are applications with higher speed but you can commonly see 200 megahertz speed available in the architecture so whereas if you buy purchase a processor you will see that it is working in a speed of gigahertz that is when you will purchase when you purchase a laptop you will be able to understand that it goes in the gigahertz range that uh, 10 power 9 but here it is 10 power 6 only so that is the advantage of microprocessor over here compared to the microcontroller it's good for general purpose applications that allow you to handle loads of data so any generic i told you this is microprocessor generic in purpose whereas here it is specific in purpose so any application that is specific you will go for a microcontroller 
you want to you you are not specific with an application you want to do any task available with that then you will go for a microprocessor it's complex and expensive with a large number of instructions to process because it can do many tasks the problem is that it is going to be complex and expensive and it has a large number of instructions because many tasks are being done but here it is going to be simple and expensive with less number of instructions because a microcontroller is built for dedicated purposes so it will have less number of instructions it is not going to be complex and it is going to be less expensive that is its advantage so and these are the applications of microprocessors that you see in your day to day life you have calculators accounting systems game machines complex industrial controllers traffic light control data military applications defense systems all of these are on the concept of microprocessors whereas devices that you see around you more more mostly common around you are the ones that run on microcontrollers most common one is your mobile phone your automobiles cd dvd players washing machines cameras security alarms keyboard controllers and the microwave oven there are many more okay so these are the applications of both the microprocessor and the microcontroller next we are going to look into what are the different microcontrollers we are going to categorize them and these categories are of different categories so you are going to we are going to categorize microcontrollers based on the first width we are going to categorize them based on the memory we are going to categorize them based on instruction set and we are also going to categorize them based on the memory architecture so as i told you bus bus is a group of wires available so what is the width of the bus it, if there are 8 wires in a single bus over here it means it is 8 bit if there are 16 wires it means 16 bit if there are 32 it means there is a 32 bit so your microcontroller depending on the bus width can be divided into 8 bit 16 bit and the 32 bit microcontrollers now depending upon the memory of the particular microcontroller is there an inbuilt memory available or is there external memory available so depending on that memory you can categorize your microcontroller into categories next is depending upon the programming instructions that is used over here are you going are you programming it using the high level language or are you programming it using the low level language so are you using cisc or are you using risc complex instruction set computing or are you using reduced instruction set computing so that is the category based on instruction set and the next category over here is the category based on the memory architecture your board your ic your, or the architecture available over there on what architecture is it based on is it based on the harvard architecture or is it based on the von neumann architecture so based on the architecture you are dividing them into these two categories so we will be looking them into detail so first memories are classified the microcontrollers are classified based on the bus width instruction set memory memory structure and the particular architecture same family they may, for a same family of microcontroller for example our arduino you may have different types of uh, sources one would be 8 bit another may be 16 bit one would work on risc another cisc and so on so same family of uh, uh, microcontrollers will have different sources and the classifications according to bits as we saw it is a, it has 8 bit 16 bit and 32 bits over here next is the classification based on the memory devices so emb embedded memory kind of when an embedded system has a microcontroller unit that has all the function blocks available on the chip itself as i told you inbuilt then it is called as an embedded microcontroller so 8051 is the best example for this particular one where the program and data memory io port serial communication counter and timer and interrupts all are embedded on the same chip over here when it comes to external memory when an embedded system has a microcontroller unit that has not all the functional blocks available on the chip so here every block is available on the chip but in external memory not all the blocks are available on the chip few of them are external that is what you mean by your particular external memory and the example for that is your 8031 has no program memory on the chip there is no program memory on the chip over here you need to use an external memory for that so these are the categories based on the um, uh, memory devices available we'll be continuing with this on our the different uh, microcontroller uh, in the next video